I bet you didn't know there's 11 divisions in the German basketball system, but there are, and I'm living proof because I'm coming to you live from the seventh division in Bobbenhausen, Hessen, Germany, as I play for the Bobbenhausen Wizards. Now, I signed this contract about a month and a half ago, and I wanted to make this video so that you guys can understand why is it that I would sign at a lower level at this point in my career? What are they giving me? What am I receiving? And ultimately, how all of that can help you in your course quest for overseas basketball in playing professionally. So let's get right into it. Now in terms of what I'm looking at in my contract, the main points of the deal is that we're looking at a salary at about 1200 to 1300 euros. So whatever that converts to an American, we're looking at a round trip flight covered. We're looking at transportation being covered while I'm over here. We're looking at lodging and housing being covered. And as well for the food, we're looking at it being partially covered. The main thing that I know you guys are concerned about is the money. So I can't lie to you guys, this is a step down for me, a big step down for me when it comes to the money. Uh, previously, when I was playing in El Salvador, I was making about 4000 around there Canadian. Here, I'm only going to be making about 1500 or something like that, 1600 Canadian, something like that. And the way it breaks down in the contract is that there's actually, I'm actually helping right now in an academy uh, with the Bob and Housing Wizards. So with their youth program, I'm helping out. And I do that for about seven, eight hours a week, train the kids. We go to games on weekends sometimes if we're not playing. And along with that, packaged with that is actually my playing salary. For the academy and playing, I'm getting $600. This is very common in European systems in these lower level divisions in Europe for teams to package the academy along with side your playing salary. So this is very typical of a European system. Now, another thing that's really typical of a European system, especially in a big economy such as Germany, which has the fourth largest GDP in the world, fourth largest economy in the world, is that they will get really creative in the jobs that they offer you in the ways that they can pay you. They actually offered me a side job when I came here alongside the plane, alongside the academy. That is going to be paying me about 750 euros around there. It really depends. I can work that job as much as I want. So if I want to work 20 hours a week, I could work 20 hours a week. When I originally came here, they wanted to have me work at a factory, a gummy bear factory, because one of my teammates, the owner of a multi-million dollar company that ships internationally for gummy bears, and they got me there, they wanted me to work there, but when I got there, I was, it's not really my thing. I haven't been doing hard labor like that since maybe even high school, so I said, nah, I'm good on that. Let's find another job. So they got me something in the desk job and an office job, a little more in my faculty, a little more in my wheelhouse. For me personally, I don't really even need that because as you've as I've mentioned in other videos, I do other things on the side. I'm a writer, I do the blog, I coach kids. So I don't really need the money. I just need it to fulfill, I guess, the requirements to get my health insurance here. Uh, so for me, I'm just working 12 hours a week. The next thing that we are looking at is the transportation. Now for me, when I'm here in Germany, they are gonna be giving me a driver. They basically drive me 95% of the time anywhere that I go. Like I said, that one of our team sponsors actually owns this house. I'm living in the basement. So they drive me basically to practice, to the academy, wherever I want to go. If I ever need to ask them to go to a grocery store or something like that, they'll gladly drive me. But oftentimes, I actually enjoy getting out on my own. So I said, hey, can you give me a bike or something to explore Germany? How about a transit pass, a train pass, so I can go visit Frankfurt, which is about 40 minutes away. And they gave me that too. So you know, they really are open to anything. So they're covering all my transportation costs. I don't have to worry about anything. Now, in terms of the flight, they're covering a flight there and back. The Christmas flight is something that I'm currently negotiating with the team. I would love to be able to go home for Christmas, but initially that was not in the contract. But, you know, this thing is fluid. I'm just being honest with them. I'm saying I want to go home. Oftentimes in these lower ranking teams, you can pretty much uh, just count on a round trip there and back, and they're probably not going to do it at Christmas time, but that's something that I'm looking for. Now, the next thing we have to look at is the food. This is kind of interesting because the food is not covered. Usually when I was playing in other countries, they would always cover the food, but here it is only really partially covered. So to date, it's about October 25th when I do this video. 
uh, I've spent about 125 euros or so on food money. Now, they'll take me out about two or three times a week, which is really nice. They'll take me to nice restaurants. Uh, they'll pay for my food for the day. They'll explore. They'll take good care of me while I'm here. So I'm really saving a lot of money in that way. But ideally, I would have preferred if the food money was covered. And if you are going to a team ever, I would say that I would recommend that you really try to get your food money covered because then you're just saving literally everything that you're making. But they're taking care of me on so many other fronts that I said, hey, okay, we'll do it half and half. I'll I'll pay for half the food out of the money that I'm making here and you guys can pay for about maybe a quarter or half the food. Now, in the end, why would I take a contract in Germany? Why would I do this? Why would I downgrade in a sense going from a team or a club that was paying me about 4,000, 5,000 to a team that's only really paying me about $1,300. Now, the main reason why I came here was because Germany and Europe in general are famous for their tier system in that they have so many divisions in Europe. As I mentioned in the opening of this video, there are 11 divisions in Europe. So teams will see you because everyone who is integrated into the system, into this European basketball system, into German basketball, they're taking tabs. They're looking at these lower divisions because they know, hey, maybe we can get somebody. Maybe we can get a player, move them up. Maybe there's an opportunity there. So that is why I came here because I wanted to quickly move up. And I'm happy to say that after only three games, there's been about five different teams who have reached out to me in the Regional Liga, one, two, and even a Pro B team to potentially play with them and move up. Now, this has kind of run into a roadblock because I'm trying to get promoted at the moment. I'm trying to get my club to release me. But as you can imagine, they're not really going for it because they know that, hey, we spent the money on you to come here to fly you over here to find a sponsor for you, to find housing for you, for all of these different things, and then you're going to ditch us after three games. But I did find a way that you can do this. I'm going to make a completely different video on this because this is really the key when you're in European basketball. I thought there was what is known as a dual license where a player can actually play for two different divisions. So if I'm playing in Landesliga, I can move up to Regional Liga and play on two different clubs through what is known as a dual license. But it turns out that you cannot actually do that unless it is in a cir special circumstance. So I'm going to be making a video on that so that you guys can get ahead of the curve so you learn from my mistakes. So essentially what I'm going to have to do at the, at the end of the day is I'm going to have to play out this contract. I'm going to have to keep on doing what I'm doing, killing it. And then maybe another team will offer me for next season. But of course, there's no guarantees. What I know right now is that five teams want me. So I was trying to strike while the iron was hot. And the other main idea as well was that in El Salvador, because of when COVID hit, that league just really died down. The market died. I was no, my team actually completely died. And the club has not existed since COVID hit. It's been out for the past two or three seasons. And then other teams were offering me about a thousand, a thousand five hundred, really nothing that I wanted. So I said, you know, if I'm going to take a pay decrease, I'm going to take a pay cut. I might as well go to a new market, uh, start over from scratch because I'm essentially starting over from scratch in El Salvador anyway. I said, let me go to a better division. Let me go to a more respected uh, market, a more respected basketball economy. And then maybe I can go from there. The Bob and Housing Wizards for a seventh division club, they treat me exceptionally well, just exceptionally well. Whenever I needed something, if I ever said that, hey, one day I said my body was sore, the next day they came to my house with a thorough gun. The one day I said, hey, I would like to shoot outside sometimes when it's sunny outside. And they came and they gave me a basketball. I said I needed a microphone because I forgot or I didn't bring my microphone from Canada. And they gave me this microphone. So these guys are really on top of it. And this is something that's really interesting. I've said it in other articles before, in other blogs before, in other videos before. You can occasionally find a team that is really desperate to get to the next level, that is really desperate to advance. And they will go all in to go to that next division. So Bobbenhausen, they're playing in Landesliga. If we win this division, then we move up to Oberliga, which is sixth division. So when you look at my contract here and what I had overall, it's really, really, for me, it's honestly quite amazing that this seven division club is able to do this because in speaking with tens of difference of players in the Regionalliga, my contract is actually better 
than the vast, vast majority of other players in the Regional Liga. Many of them can't even offer a, a salary. Some of them are offering salaries that are lower than this. And few of them are going to offer such a setup. So in the grand scheme of things, is it a lot of money? No, it is not. But for what I was looking for, I understood that from the start. I knew that I was going to have to basically start over. You know, it sucks that COVID happened. It sucks that it hit. But, you know, a lot of players are going through this as well, taking pay decreases. And it's just something you got to fight through. And hopefully I can establish myself in this division, in this region, in this league, and just keep doing what I'm doing. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to give a quick video, a quick update on what I'm doing. Also, I recently came out with a few basketball resume templates. If you are serious about going to the professional level or the overseas level, you will need a good resume template, a good resume alongside some good video. I'll leave the link in the description below. Other than that, thanks so much for tuning in. Take care, God bless, and peace.